Uh, in this section, we are going to talk about velocity of different points of a rigid body and how they are related to each other. <clears throat> if you consider any rigid body, like this one, and just consider two points of it, this time this rigid body is not connected to ground. Um, it is an arbitrary rigid body. It can move and rotate. Now we'll consider two points of it, <clears throat> two points on this rigid body. How the velocity of these two points are related to each other. So based on the equations that we had for re uh, relative velocity between two points, two arbitrary points in chapter three, velocity of B um, velocity of B is equal to velocity of A plus relative velocity of B with respect to A. This is true for any, po any two points. They don't have to be on the same rigid body. This is a general equation that we had before, right? But how is gonna be different when we choose these two points on the same rigid body? Uh, this equation is gonna be an, um, an important equation which relates the velocity of two points on a rigid body, right? So uh, the physical meaning of velocity of B with respect to A is, this means if I pin down A, then how the velocity is gonna, velocity of B is gonna look like. That's the meaning of relative velocity of B with respect to A. It means if we sit on point A and move with A and look at A, then what's going to be the velocity of B in our eyes? Or in other words, if I pin down A, then look at the velocity of B, what's going to be the, uh, what's going to be the uh, velocity of B in that condition? Uh, just assume this rigid body is rotating with angular velocity of omega. So if I pin down A, what's going to be the velocity of A? You know that's from the previous section. From the previous section, if A is pinned to the ground, the relative velocity of B with respect to A is going to be R times omega, right? B is going to move on a circle with the radius of AB or R, if I call this R. Uh, the velocity of it is going to be R times omega. This r times omega is the relative velocity of b with respect to a. Okay? So, um, we can put that in our equation. Um, before doing that, uh, just to remind you, the vector form of this equation is omega cross r, right? If I want to, this is the magnitude of it, the vector form of it is omega cross r. If you use this equation, it's gonna give you the magnitude r omega and also the direction of it, which is perpendicular to ab. Instead of r, you can write ab as well. So you can write it omega cross ab. Let's put this in our equation. If you do that, then Velocity of B is equal to velocity of A plus omega cross AB. This is a very important equation. Sometimes um, in a lot of problems, we know something about velocity of A and something about velocity of B. And for example, we don't know what is omega. So if you put your information in this equation, you are gonna, you are gonna be able to find omega, for example. Or sometimes, for example, we know velocity of A, we know omega, then we are looking for velocity of B. Again, in that condition, you can put the velocity of A here, omega here, and AB, then you are gonna be able to find velocity of B. Um, just to show you an example, let's work on this one. 
problem five, uh, 56, chapter 5. So what do we have in this problem? We have this pulley. Actually, there are two pulleys. They are welded together. So they are stick together and they are rotating together. And we have a cable here, which goes around the bigger pulley. The other side of the cable is fixed to the uh, roof. Um, we have another cable which is going around the smaller pulley and we are pulling it up with the velocity of u. So the velocity of this point of the cable is v. I said u, sorry, it is v. And we are looking for velocity of the center of uh, this pulley, O. And also, we, we would like to find the velocity of point B. So, again, we know the velocity of this point of uh, the cable, which goes around this pulley. It is V, it is given, it is 3 feet per second. And we are trying to find the velocity of the center of the disk, and also velocity of this point of the disk, point B. I would say it's been like 10 minutes at least on this problem, try to solve it, do your best, then we can work on it together. So I'm gonna assume you did that. Now we are trying to solve it together. <clears throat> so um, uh, look at this disk. Um, what we know about this disk. First of all, I know the velocity of this cable, this point of it is V upward. And if you look at this point of the disk, it is in contact with the cable right? So they're gonna have the same, and there is no slip between them. Because of that, they're gonna have the same velocity. So the, the velocity of this point of, um, of the um, pulley is gonna be equal to the velocity of the cable, right? So if I call this point, like points, let's call it D, for example, of the pulley, the velocity of it is V. What else I know about this disk? Um, if you look at this point of the pulley, what is the velocity of this point of the pulley? It is zero. It is very similar to a rolling disk on ground, which we had it in the previous part. If I rotate this, just 90 degree, you're gonna see that. This is like a ground, right? It's not moving, the velocity of this cable, this part of the cable is zero. And this is a pulley which is, which is rolling on the ground without any slip. If you remember in that part, we said the velocity of this point is gonna be equal to zero because it is in contact with ground and there is no slip. So the velocity of this point of the pulley momentarily is gonna be equal to zero. We have exactly the same condition here too. So if I call this point P, velocity of P at this moment is equal to zero, right? Now, um, if I write the relative velocity equation between D and P, which we just talked about it, then I'm gonna be able to find omega of this rigid body. I can use that equation because D and P, both of them are on the same rigid body, right? So based on that equation, velocity of D is equal to velocity of P plus omega cross product to PD, right? So um, if I use um, x, y coordinate like this, let's say this is x and this is y, 
and let's assume the angle of velocity is going to be in clockwise direction you can assume in the other direction too but your result is going to be negative but everything would be fine if you assume that so we have this relative velocity equation between p and d two points on the same rigid body now what we know about these velocities velocity of d i know everything about it i know the direction of it and also the magnitude of it is given three feet per second velocity of p is zero so i know everything about this omega i don't know it and i'm going to be able to find it from this equation pd i know it's going to be uh, with uh, the big radius plus the smaller radius here right so i know i know pd as well so in this vector equation i have only one unknown let's write down everything and see what happens velocity of d is v in the j direction and v is given it is three feet per second is equal to zero plus omega i assume is going to be in clockwise direction so in vector form whenever some uh, an angle of velocity is in clockwise direction that's negative k whenever it's uh, counterclockwise that's going to be positive k right so i'm going to write it as negative omega k hat cross product to pd and um pd from here to here you have 8 plus 4 uh 12 inch or one feet so um i'm gonna have one feet and because it's from p to d it's gonna be negative i so i'm gonna have negative one times i so uh now let's do this cross product we have k cross i k cross i is going to be j these two negatives are going to cancel out each other so i'm going to have omega times j now this is a simple equation now v which we know it it is three is going to be equal to omega so based on that omega is going to be equal to three radians per second now after finding the angle of velocity of this uh, pulley i'm going to be able to find velocity of any points of it how again i'm going to use this physical fact that the velocity of p is equal to zero <clears throat> velocity of o first of all from the previous section you know whenever you have a disc which is ro rolling on ground with uh, no slip condition and we have no slip condition the velocity of the centroid of it is going to be r times omega that's one way to find the velocity of o so it's going to be 8 inch divided by 12 to make it fit times omega that's one way to find velocity of o the other way using the relative velocity equation um, velocity of o is equal to velocity of p plus omega cross p o this is another way to find the velocity of o so velocity of o is going to be equal to vp is zero omega again is uh, negative three in the k direction cross product to p o which is 8 divided by 12 feet in the negative i direction. So negative 8 by 12 in the i direction. Again, do the cross product. Um, negatives are going to cancel out. K cross i is j. So I'm going to have 3 times 8 divided by 12. So it's going to be 2 feet per second. In the j direction so to the j direction foot per second which is equal to r omega 2 right um the other side uh, part of the question is what is the velocity of b again i can use the same equation to find the velocity of b 
or I can use that equation to find any velocity of any other points. So velocity of B is equal to <coughs> um, velocity of P plus omega cross PB. Again, I can use this relative velocity equation because these points are on the same rigid body. So let's plug in the numbers. Velocity of P is equal to zero. Omega again is negative three in the K direction, cross product to PB. Uh, vector PB is negative eight in the I direction, positive eight in the J direction in inch. If I divide them by 12, I'm gonna have that um, in feet. So it's gonna be negative eight divided by 12 in the I direction, positive eight divided by 12 in the J direction. Now I can easily do this cross product. So velocity of P will be equal to K cross I is J, and two negatives are gonna cancel out each other. So I'm gonna have two in J direction. Uh, K cross J is negative I. I have negative here too. So all together positive, three times eight divided by 12 is gonna be two again. So two in the I direction. And the unit is feet per second. So we can find the velocity of any other points on this rigid body like point B. And the magnitude of the velocity is the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is going to be 2.83 per second.